Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Angular 10 full tutorial series for absolute beginners. In today's episode, we are going to learn about multiple router outlets in Angular application. In the previous episode, we have learned about router outlet. We have seen the usage of it. We have seen the syntax. We have seen why it should be used in Angular application. But there are some questions around it like can there be multiple router outlets? If yes, how can we use them? What's the syntax of uh, a corp incorporating router outlet? We'll learn all about it in today's episode. So if you have still have any questions or doubts, I recommend you please drop me your queries and questions in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to answer and discuss with you. This is part 37 of the Angular 10 complete tutorial playlist. I've planned around 100 tutorials for you. We are soon going to hit the half May mark. I'm very excited because we'll be starting an Angular live um, real time application as well very soon. So make sure you check out the description box, which has all the links to the previous uh, tutorials as well as to the GitHub link, which has all the notes and the code available. These are all the topics that I've already covered uh, in detail along with notes. So make sure you check it out. Uh, for your reference if you really want to learn and master angular 10 if you have any doubts on any of these topics that I've covered in detail please do let me know again in comment section more than happy to help you all right so in the previous episode we have learned about router outlet today we will learn about using multiple router outlets in our application all right so just a quick uh, background to our friends who are joining us new in this uh, episode Router outlet is a directive that's available from the router library where the router inserts the component that gets matched based on the current browser's URL, right? Um, you can add multiple router outlets in our Angular application, which enables advanced routing scenarios, right? By default, there always has to be one router outlet, which is treated as primary by Angular, right? Now, the way to define multiple router outlets is by giving them a name, right? Uh, that way they become named router outlets, right? When you don't give any name, it becomes primary and there is only one primary, okay? So any, you can have multiple router outlets, but you need to give name to them, right? So let's see how to do that. Um, so open the application. I'll open some notes for you, right? So multiple router outlets, right? So first uh, we can have multiple router outlets right by default there is one right there is always one router outlet in app dot component dot html file right when we don't provide any name any name for router outlet right it becomes primary right and there is only one primary right there should be only one primary right I'll show you this also in just a bit of to why what happens if you give multiple uh, we can define uh, we can define multiple router outlets by giving name to them right that's why we call them call them named router outlets right why named because we are giving them a name right that's why we call them as named router outlets all right so let's go ahead so we have one primary already now let's define router outlet right i'll throw in one more and now we'll give name to them so we'll say name equal to say route one you can give any name. There is no uh, problem with that. Uh, that's up to you, whichever name you want to give. I'm giving route one, route two. You can give any name you want, right? So now see in this application, now we are having more than one router outlet. I told you in the previous application, there has to be by default, there is always one, right? So I should say at least one should be there, right? That's what we discussed in the previous episode. So there is one already because I have not given any name, this becomes primary, primary router outlet. These two are called named router outlet because they have a name. What is the name? Route 1, Route 2. Now, some people will say, is it necessary to give Route 1, Route 2? No, right? 
we can give any name we want. Uh, give meaningful name, right? Um, don't give um, some random names which doesn't make sense, right? Or you can give something like login, you can give forgot password or some name which um, is matching or related to your application. Um, don't give like ABC, test one, um, you know, because if you give such things, it doesn't have meaning, to it, right? Um, so I'll say add loans, right? I'll say add, you can say edit, right? So whenever there is add loan, I'll go here, right? So like this, so have some meaningful names. So that way you can um, build beautiful application. And it also, it's much readability, right? Um, so those things you make sure that you do it uh, correctly, okay? The ideal way is use single names if you want uh, use for modules or something. That's again uh, how your project is described, but I'm just giving you a good practice. So you can say add loan, edit loan, okay? So save it. So now you see, um, so I have now three route, router outlets. This is primary router outlet. This is our named router outlet. This is the third router outlet. Alrighty, so enough of this. Let's get started into the code. Now let's go to our routing module. Okay, here you will see this is the thing that we def defined, right? So we have loans, we have add, we have loan types. Now in the co after component, put comma and say which outlet. Now this is the outlet that you defined here, right? which outlet you are talking about. If you don't give anything, it's by default primary, right? So remember this, extremely important. If in routing module, if you don't define outlet, it means it's primary, right? It means it's primary. That's why when you don't see anything here, it will directly go and the output will be pro and the route will be processed by this right outlet. But once you define and say I am going to have my outlet, what is the outlet name? Say add loan. This has to be same name that you defined of the router outlet else it will give error obviously right. So make sure that you give the same name that you defined there in the routing module. Now let's start the application. All right, it may take a couple of seconds to build, but in the meanwhile, if you are enjoying this tutorial, please do hit the like button. If you have any doubts, drop them in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much in advance. All right, almost there. All right, so now it's done. Let's go to our application. All righty, so now let's just reload. Right. Uh, why is this showing like this? Let's uh, let's delete this. Let's clean up a little bit. All right. So we have loans work. Let's see if there are any errors. I don't see any. Okay. We don't have any errors. Good so far. So by default, if I you don't have any, that's what I told you. If you don't have any outlet defined here in the routes in the routing module, if you don't have any outlet, it will take and match the router outlet that is the primary router outlet okay but if you have provided a name of the outlet it will go and match this it yeah, that's what is our requirement and how do you do that that can only be done via the routes but if you do something like this it will not show you see it will not show you okay it will not show if you directly access it in the URL this is very, very important because half the time a lot of people will miss it. I'm telling you this will not work. OK, so make sure that this is line is underlined. So make sure that you get that read that line again. It will not show if you directly access it in the URL. The way you access it is with a primary you always with a primary URL. OK, like like see this is main, right? This is primary. This is secondary. So how do you do that? You will pass secondary okay and see carefully now guys because this is very very important here i'm saying loans so it says loans work right that's the component main component 
now I am saying here I am saying route 1 colon add oh so my outlet name is add loan okay so loans and then we will say add loan enter oh uh, let's see it right here add so here the path is add you have to give the path and then the outlet name right so here uh, the so this is little tricky guys so make sure you follow me add loan is the outlet name this is the secondary path this is the path add is the path now hit enter you should see both outlets right loan works is the primary which is this add loan is your outlet name next is the parameter which is the secondary path of which should load next right so see this here I have listed it for you um, here so you have the local host followed to so this route one is your outlet name add is the path right so I hope that's clear now let me just type it for you so the syntax should be like this on the similar lines it need not to be same it has to be something similar so here you will have primary route right angle bracket then you will have router outlet name followed by right so this colon followed by the secondary path right this is very very critical because if you make mistake it will show you a lot of errors right so see primary route angle bracket router outlet name followed by the secondary path a secondary path or secondary component whichever you want to load path for that so here you have add loan and now it shows both so this if you open you would see it is matching two router outlets for you now so see now you have router outlet right which is loading app loans right here this one loan works then you have router outlet named which is add loan see here and it's loading this right so the second one so that is how you can have multiple outlets multiple router outlets in angular application now you will ask me why are we using this okay uh, don't ask me right uh, <laughs> the reason being that see uh, this is a way to have multiple components right or multiple routes loaded um, you may need some scenarios but avoid uh, avoid this use case in applications it right? should we use it uh, no we should avoid using it why because you can inject you can inject very well uh, components right instead of map matching the secondary route and doing it um, so you can do pretty much everything by injecting or mapping components so you don't because this URL is not really friendly right URL is not friendly um, if you notice here if you notice here you're passing brackets and then following with that so it's not really uh, user friendly and it's not bookmarkable right um, so it's not really useful in a sense for that um, bookmark a bill URL okay now I can tell you I have worked in very very large complex applications in my uh, past experience so I can tell you that I have not uh, personally uh, seen this um, used a lot okay um, so for the sake of your understanding and knowledge I have created this tutorial to show you but will it be really used in real-time applications I can tell you that it's not I can tell you it's not um, it's not used um, very freak or um, not not used very much is what I would say um, I don't think as a beginner you should focus too much on it as well uh, I will try and come up with use cases where we can have such um, use cases but as at least as of now this is what you should be knowing of how to use how to pass all right I think that covers pretty much everything that I wanted to cover today uh, in the next episode um, I will cover about a routing strategy that's used in angular applications and how can we customize what are the different strategies that you can implement in your application if you like my work if you like my tutorials please consider buying me a coffee at 
find me at coffee.com slash rtutorials. Join me in the next episode where we'll talk about different types of routing strategies and we'll implement some routing strategies in our application. Thank you so much for joining. See you in the next episode.